Hello and welcome to the creation of urine. We are going to look at the smallest functional unit of the kidneys, the nephron. We will also discuss the filtration, reabsorption and secretion which creates urine and follow its journey through the renal system all the way from the nephron to the toilet bowl. Firstly, let's look at a cross section of the kidney and see where the nephron is actually located. Here we have the outer layer of the renal capsule and the inside is divided into two specific regions, the more superficial being the renal cortex and the inner being the renal medulla, of which it is compiled of segments called the renal pyramids. Here lies the nephron, situated in both the cortex and the medulla. In one kidney there is approximately one million nephrons, all of which consist of two main parts, the renal capsule and the renal tubules. The renal capsule is comprised of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. The capsule encircles the glomerular capillaries and is where the blood plasma filters into the renal tubules. The renal tubules are where reabsorption of water and solutes and the secretion of waste occurs to maintain correct blood volume and composition. The rate in which filtration occurs at the glomerulus is referred to as the glomerular filtration rate or the GFR. GFR averages 125 mL per minute in males and 105 mL per minute in females. It is important that GFR stays consistent, as if the GFR is too high, filtrate passes too quickly through the tubules for reabsorption to occur, resulting in them being excreted in the urine. If GFR is too slow, everything will be reabsorbed, including the waste products, and they may not be excreted properly in the urine. GFR is directly related to the pressures of the glomerular blood and the glomerular capsule. For example, if a person were to have a severe blood loss, there would be a decrease in blood volume and therefore a decrease in blood pressure at the glomerulus. This results in a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate. If this drops too low, filtration rate will stop completely. Filtrate moves from the Bowman's capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule where almost complete reabsorption of water and nutritionally important solutes back into the capillaries occurs. 100% of glucose and amino acids, 50% of urea and variable amounts of ions such as sodium, potassium, calcium and chloride generally reabsorb here also. The most important of these is the sodium. Nutrients such as glucose and vitamins piggyback on sodium synporters which transport the solutes across the membranes. Reabsorption of these solutes creates the reabsorption of water by creating an osmotic gradient. As more water is reabsorbed to the blood, the solute concentration becomes greater in the tubules. This causes an electrochemical gradient which promotes the further diffusion of solutes back into the capillaries. The filtrate then moves through the descending limb to the loop of Henle where further reabsorption of water and ions takes place. The filtrate continues its journey up the ascending limb and into the distal convoluted tubule where the finishing touches are done to the dilution of the filtrate. Two hormones in particular help regulate this. Aldosterone stimulates the principal cells of the tubule to reabsorb more sodium. This leads to more water reabsorption which is how the body regulates blood volume and blood pressure. Antidiuretic hormone or ADH regulates any remaining water reabsorption that may be necessary for the body's homeostasis. ADH stimulates the insertion of aquaporin 2 into the principal cells of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts, which increases the cell permeability and water moves more rapidly back into the blood. In the absence of ADH, these cells are quite impermeable. Low ADH results in loss of water in the urine and dehydration. Now the filtrate has reached its appropriate concentration and moves down the collecting duct to join other filtrates from many of the other nephrons. The filtrate now moves into the minor calyx where it can now be called urine. The urine travels through the major calyx into the renal pelvis and then on into the ureter. The urine travels down the ureter and enters the bladder at the ureteral openings and is stored in the bladder until urination occurs. The term for urination is micturition. The bladder can hold an average 5 to 600 mL of urine, though when the bladder exceeds 2 to 400 mL, stretch receptors within the bladder walls transmit impulses to the mitruition center in the sacral spinal cord. This creates the involuntary contraction of the detrusor muscle and relaxation of the internal sphincter muscle. This is called the mitruition reflex. Upon the conscious decision to go to the bathroom, the voluntary relaxation of the external sphincter causes urination. Commonly, in the Western world, we urinate into a toilet bowl, of which there are constant debates between the sexes as to the etiquette of this, but that is for a different video.